Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. My name is Denise Mika Hutchins and I'm broadcasting to you from Studio Mika Arts. It is Thursday, which I can't believe the days are going by very fast this month, this year. Um, which means it's time to work some more on this lovely illustration. It's meant to be a greeting card, so it'll be, it's going to be a five and a half by seven half fold greeting card, so it'll be folded down the middle. This will be the front and this will be the back. And I'm using watercolor right now. I'm not only going to be using watercolor, but I'm going to do all the color and watercolor, then ink details, and finally a little digital extras at the very end. So today I actually tried something different because it's been taking me a long time to get some of these colors going because they're dry. So I, I put a little water on them to wake them up. So hopefully that will make painting go by faster so I'm not just trying to work the color and get it to wake up. They're already soaking. Um, but something I wanted to do last time as I was working on this, is this another pet hair? It is. Little pet hairs love this textured. It's 300 pound cold press watercolor paper. So it's not rough, so it, it, it could be worse, but the texture is still, um, I mean, it's there. And it loves grabbing onto the little puppy and kitty hairs. Anyway, I wanted to add more leaves, but just general shapes, not so specific as these. I'm thinking about using this brush, but it might also... So I think what I'll do, and this will be an excellent example of why I started creating work on, uh, much smaller than the page that I'm working on, so that I can do little tests in the sides, so in the margins. So I'll just test this brush, which I've mostly been using for mixing colors and not for actual painting because it can grab a, a whole bunch of pigment and put it down and, and mix a bunch for me to use. But let's just take all this dried up patch of color from yesterday and see what kind of shapes I can make with this brush. See if I can get that sort of leaf shape that I'm hoping for. And these maple leaves are seven pointed. So let's try one. Oh, it's very dry. One, two, three. Oh, it's very, very dry. Four, five, six, seven. Well, I think I can do it with this brush. Maybe let's let's see another brush see if it works better so I'm just gonna rinse this one out and we'll see if I have another brush that can make the shape that I want so this isn't it's not quite what I want but maybe it's just because I'm not using using that brush let's see uh, so many brushes Many, many, many brushes. Here's just a smaller. Oh, this one's flat though. I don't want flat. I want a round brush. This is smaller. I want it to be relatively soft. This might work. Oh, these ones are drawing. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Oh, this might be better. I have two of the same one, a smaller and a larger one. Okay, I'll try this one. I use this one quite a bit actually for the Princeton Aqua Elite round in size 8. So we'll just wake up a different color. Sometimes I do clean this off. Usually if I clean it off it's because I finished a piece and I I'm cleaning off that one, but I often just leave it and then whatever next piece I come to, uh, it's going to have some of whatever was there before, which I actually like. I think it's fun. Okay, so let's see what this one does as far as trying to get the leaf shape. Uh, I think this will work better. I 
it makes a smaller leaf. Maybe I'll just use both of these because this is more like many of the leaf sizes here. But this one is also like it's almost the exact same size as like these ones here or maybe this one. So let's try that. Because there's just like leaves everywhere in the reference image I'm working from. And here, what I've created so far, it's not enough. I want more. So now let's make a color. Oh, it's so nice. We're going to mix a color. Yeah, I need to get... Maybe I still have one from when my pigeons needed to take medicine. A little syringe. So I can just put beep, boop, boop. So what I did was try to pour a tiny bit of water. Oh, you can't see. But I tried to pour a tiny bit of water in to wake up the colors. But it was still way too much. <laughs> so I had to take a paper towel and soak up the extra water. Okay. Ah, oh, it's so nice. Yay. Ooh. It's so much faster <laughs> to get a color I like. Okay. So now I'm just going to paint leaf shapes. And I'm not even going to worry about avoiding the branches or anything. So these are going to almost be like stamps in the background. So if they're on top of everything else, I don't even mind. One, two, three, four, five, and two little ones on the bottom. Six, seven. I've only added two and it's already like, oh yes, this is what I needed to do. Add some more with paint. Instead of hand drawing each individual little ridge of leaf, now just adding the idea of leaves. Basically, I'm going to actually turn this upside down. I'm trying to have a light hand at the beginning and then squish it down to create that tapered look, the tapered leaf look. I am going, I, it's not going to be perfect, but I am going to try to avoid the griffins. I did get the tail a little bit right there, but... Try to paint around the griffins a bit, but also not be too precious about it. As I do this, I'm getting better and better at controlling the brush to make the shape I want. And it's always so nice because it's an organic shape anyway, so if they're a little bit different from one another, that actually just adds to the naturalism of it. Oops, sorry, I'm way the heck off the screen. When I'm working on chibis and stuff, it feels like I have my camera way too far away. When I'm working on something larger, I'm like, oh, there's no room. Yes, this is doing what I wanted. It's already getting more full, and I've only done like, what, five or six additional paint-only leaves.
bottom ones. The little bottom ones are the hardest to make. Oh, maybe if I do that. There. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy this is working. With everything I do, I feel like I always end up doing some experiment and you never know exactly how it's going to turn out. If it's going to be a success or if you're just going to have to try to work around it because you can't take it back. So it's nice that this is a success. Let's make a slightly different color. Oh, Exy, hello! <laughs> yeah, it's a success. Yay! How are you? Yay, so happy to see you. Let me look what this is. I love looking at all the emotes that you have. Rave! <laughs> yeah, it's working. It's working. Adding these little leaves in. Okay, I'm going to do the red-orange now. Make a color based on that. So for slightly different leaf color. And then they'll combine in different interesting ways. I love how, real quick I'll hold this up, how we're still getting that combination effect even with fairly similar colors, but just applying it out on the top of something that's already dry is enough. All right, got my red orange, but I definitely do not want just red orange. Let's tone it down a bit with some brown. I think I'll tone it down with the same brown. Oh, I'm rhyming. Toning down with the same brown. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. I hope to make good progress today because I decided... I will indeed for my Patreon rewards, instead of doing a completely different piece that's not related to my main work, which is what I always, I wanted to always send out main work for Patreon rewards, but it always takes me longer than a month to make a piece. So I'm gonna send out this as it is, scan it all nice and fit it, format it nice to uh, the postcard, because we only have postcards so far, and then everyone can compare this work in progress at the end of today, however it is at the end of today, to the final one, which I should definitely finish in February before it's time to send out the next batch of rewards. So, yay! Okay. Adding more leaves. Ooh, this is a very nice color. Seven points. Ooh, getting much, much more leafy. We're getting leafy. I was thinking of using that bigger brush, but I was just using this the whole time. Maybe I will bring in the, the bigger brush after this. Just to get a little bit more variety. Do some big ones. Ooh, I need a drink of water though. I'm on to my big water bottle so far today. Almost all my water 
has been drunk. Just that last bottle left. Okay, ooh, this is gonna take all the color away. Okay, we're gonna do one big brown leaf. Oh, it's so dry, it's so absorbent brush that it doesn't uh, paint that well. <laughs> Maybe I will continue using the smaller one after this. Because it's so absorbent that it won't let go. It won't let go of the water. It won't let go of the color. Alright, we tried. Now we have to mix another color. <laughs> whoopsie. Well, I didn't know. Not whoopsie, because I didn't know. So, I tried. I'm always learning. Every time I make a new piece, I'm always learning. Even if it's like this, the third one in a series. No, there's always something new. There's always something new. Let's mix the two reds together. I have this purpley, this vibrant purpley red, and then, I mean, they're both vibrant, but then there's this orangey. All right, let's mix them together. Ooh. Let's just use this straight. I like this. Let's just use this straight. I feel like I have to paint even more carefully doing this than I do trying to paint inside the lines. And then boop. Boop. For those little leaves on the bottom. I don't want to do too many leaves with this super vibrant color, but it is so nice. Let's, let's add little... little Explosions, little mini explosions of color. One, two, three. Yeah, let's do one, two, three of this super vibrant color. And now let's, let's tone it down a little bit with some. Maybe we'll put a little yellow in, even. Well, this yellow-brown. It's probably yellow ochre. I don't know the actual color names. I just described them in basic terms. This yellow-brown color we're going to mix in. Ooh, that's nice, too. Of course, I love pretty much every color, so every color is nice, but... Um, and I love this reddish-brown as well. Okay. Oh, no, I want a little bit more of the purpley red. <laughs> Are you saying same to love all the colors? I love oh, rainbow. All colors are beautiful. Though I do tend to like more vibrant colors rather than more muted colors. Oh, 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 oh gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Still easy to basic names. Yay, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in that. It's kind of hard, too, anyway, with some of the specific colors names. Like, what's the difference between teal and turquoise? Or sea green and glass green? Or, you know, there's very, 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 very specific names that could be really hard. Maybe if you're working for Pantone or something, then it's easier. But for me, I, I don't really need, I don't need them to make colors. I don't need spe very specific color names. Some of these leaves are a little wonky, but I think it's okay. So now I'm just trying to create a sort of foresty inside of a tree effect. 
we've got our nice perfect specifically technically drawn leaves so now we're just filling the space going for an overall effect Ooh, Aoife's having a dream. Big dog Aoife, she's going, oh, oh, in her dream. <laughs> yep, yep. I suppose unless you're specifically selling something. For instance, I have these cool little stickers for my planner. And it's, they don't even make them anymore. It's sad, I really liked them. They look like little drops of watercolor when you put them on there and they're like translucent so you could still see what you wrote underneath them and the packaging had the name for each specific color and I actually saved that packaging because I really liked that because it was in Japanese so I was like oh cool to know these specific color names I like that but I don't make anything like that I'm not creating a, a thing that has a specific name for each color is just not necessary, so. Ah, it's really, really, really. Ah. And this is so fun, too. It's not very. How can I say? It's not high pressure making these shapes. I'm just trying to get nice coverage at this point, so. It's looking for areas where it's all, oh, that's kind of a bare patch. I mean, there's some places where, in the reference image, and where I would like to keep not too many leaves. Like, right here, I think is nice to have not too many leaves because it draws your eye by being blank. And this is the area where I would like the viewer to look first. But then there's other areas like here, which are still kind of bare, and I would, would like more action going on. With, I'd like it to be more active. With as far as the leaves are concerned. a little bit more color orange and let's do slightly more brown this time a darker brown it's more yellow it's a more yellow brown well I guess it's kind of in between the red so I have here a pretty red brown and here's a very yellow brown it's more yellow than brown and this is kind of in between it's probably burnt umber Very nice, very nice. And I'm trying not to be afraid to cover leaves. We definitely want overlap because that is much more natural to have lots of leaves overlapping. If for no other reason, then that's exactly how the reference image that I'm looking at over here is. There's just so many leaves that there's actually only a few leaves that are really by themselves. Almost every single leaf is being covered or covering another leaf. A pet hair! No! Okay, I got it. <laughs> Dang pet hairs. My cute pets, and I can't resist letting them in here and getting on my desk. Well, that's only Kiki. My cat Kiki. Yep. 
I'm just looking at this um, before I add more. I think maybe at this point what would be nice is so I'm not I'm not copying the leaves from the reference image. I'm just using it to look at the density of leaves. And at this point, maybe what would be nice is to create a vignette effect by adding even more layers of leaves in the corners so that it has this sort of halo around the image. So I think I'm going to do that. Hey, Axie, did you make the Forbidden Kingdom poster yet? <laughs> I don't want to nag you, but I'm super excited about it. Still been listening to the soundtrack every day. Even though stuff like this is almost certainly out of the frame, I like to just finish it just in case. So you never know when it actually comes to trim it, digitally trim it. I found that sometimes I underestimate and it's not enough and I'm like, oh man, and I have to use like t digital tools to sort of fill in. So I just try to paint a little bit outside of the boundaries on purpose. Ooh, yay! <laughs> Looking forward to it! Yay! Have you done- what other movies have you done? I saw the Edward Scissorhands one. Did you do any other ones, or was that the first one? take a break for a second so I can look it over and see any more patches where I want to add more leaves Ooh, alien that's Sarah Quilt's favorite movie her I've never heard of that movie what's that about 2013 Oh, Princess Bride, yes, I love that movie so much. <laughs> awesome. Demolition, oh, Demolition, Demolition 2015. I haven't heard of that one either. Or is it, oh, Demolition 2015. I was thinking Demolition Man, but that was like from the 80s, I think. Um, I watched it when I was a little, little kid, so I don't remember anything about it. And it was a super action-violent movie, I think. So I don't remember anything about it. Oh, really? One of your top five. What's it about? Yeah, I think right here, there's... It's a little bear... But I think it actually makes it a bit more natural that this area is also uh, free, relatively free of leaves. If this was all super full and then this was as it is, it might look like what, what like I just forgot <laughs> to paint here. So, oh, I don't, I can never remember. Oh, Wolf is here. Hello, you guys are little slidey in one. Yay! How are you, Wolf? A man falls in love with a woman. Oh, Scarlett Johansson. I know that's all. <laughs> that person. I don't know how to pronounce the first name. I've, I've looked it up and I already forgot. So I'm not going to say it. Jay Phoenix, I would call. 
<laughs> Jay Phoenix. That name is familiar to me, but I don't know if I've seen anything with him in it. Wow. Wow King. Wow King? Like that? Like wow? Like wow? Wow. Wow. -oo. Wow King. The keen thing makes sense because of quinoa. How keen? How keen? Wow. So maybe it's like in between. Wow keen. Wow. Ho. Ho. Like quinoa. Okay, so keen is like quinoa. Or wow. Wa. Like later. Way? Way keen? Like that? Oh, like water. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> Wa. Joaquin. Like that? Oh, is it like the op- Is it like quinoa, but opposite? Well, it's not his real name anyways. <laughs> oh, like quinoa, but backwards. Oh, I'll be able to remember. It's like quinoa, but backwards. Joaquin. Yay. <laughs> To answer your question, yeah, we're talking about the movies that Exy has made the posters for. And I had not heard of this movie. What was it called again? She? I think so. I'm gonna scroll up. Her. It's called Her. Ah, oh, Wolf has seen it too. It was good. Maybe I'll have to see it. It's I imagine it's a romance. I don't actually watch romance movies very much, so, which may be surprising considering one of my favorite game genres is otome game, which is basically romance game, so. <laughs> but game is like you're involved in making decisions. A movie, you're just sort of watching it happen. <laughs> Such a big <vague> description. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I was looking at the overall composition and how it was feeling about the leaves. I, so I'm okay with this not having too many leaves. It sort of makes sense like it's kind of weaving down through like this. So I'm like happy with this whole side. This side, I think I actually want to add just a little bit more like right here. So that's what I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna mix some of the purpley red with this orangey brown that I already had. And I'll use that. That's a very nice, like rose, rose pink. Ooh, Jake Gyllenhaal. He was in the Spider-Man movie, right? I never really saw him in anything before, and then he was in Spider-Man, right? That's him, right? I do a, I do appreciate that. For me, spoilers is like anything beyond what's in the trailer. And sometimes even the trailers, like I won't watch a second different trailer because I'm like, no, I don't want to know any more than that. Okay, there's a lot of small leaves here. I think maybe what I want to do is add one big one. So let's do that. Oh, it's quite dry. A little bit more water for this. But try to avoid the griffin's tail. End of watch. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler? Oh, that's him. Is it Nightcrawler like X-Men Nightcrawler? Or is it Nightcrawler like the worm? Or is it a completely different thing? Okay, add another one here, I think. I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe... No, let's add one over here, actually. A leaf. I do want to add one here. 
I'm looking not just at this, but over at my screen because it really helps. It gives me a different way of seeing it. I don't like scary movies. <laughs> Nightcrawler. Oh no! <laughs> I like ghost movies. And I guess I, I, it depends. It depends on the scary movie actually. So for instance, I love... I haven't seen the one that came out relatively recently, like within the past, I don't know, five years or something. But those old, I think they came out in the 80s or 90s, um, Creep Show. And there were just little episodes and each one had like, each set had like four or five episodes. Those are great. I love those. And like ghost movies. Um... There was another, ooh, there's this great one called Altitude, and it's like a monster, monster movie. I love that one too. So it's not that I don't like any scary movies, it just depends on the scary movie. Creepy, huh? I guess as long as it's not like, what I really, I do not like, like, slasher, I guess, Horror movies where the point is showing horrible things. I don't I don't enjoy those. But stuff where especially when the it's the ghost story and it's like because it's a ghost, it's such a mystery. And so it's almost like a mystery movie more than a scary movie. There was this one called uh, the English title was called A Tale of Two Sisters, and that was a very interesting. And it, it was fairly violent, but it had, it was like, is this ghost real? Is it just their imagination? Are they making it up to cover up bad mem bad real memories? Or like, or is, did this really happen? And it was like, what? And then you watch it to the end, and it still doesn't resolve it. And I like that when they leave it kind of open-ended, and you just think about it, and you're like, oh. Huh? Was the ghost real then, or what? But she was there, and so <laughs> that kind of thing. I love that. Okay. I'm looking back again. Maybe I do want a little bit more leaves right here. So let's just keep adding. I want it to really look like they're inside the canopy of leaves. No, another pet hair. Get out of here. <laughs> Got it out. Got it off of my painting. Mmm. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So is it like a ghost? Oh, Aoife's growling. Her little feet are running too. Like, me, 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 me. That's good it's not a horror movie. Maybe it would be something I could watch. Okay. How are we doing? I'm looking it over some more. I do like having this opening here. And I'm gonna look over at my screen over here too to see it smaller, which really helps. Huh, wow. Interesting. So maybe you'd call it psychological? A psychological psychological thriller or something? Because it's about the way people think. So who's Jake Gyllenhaal in it, the main guy?
Okay, I think what I want to do now is actually a little bit more texture work with the sponge to get some overall movement of colors. So when I'm seeing this reference image I'm working from, they've got the background is doing completely different shapes than what the tree is creating. So I'd like to just get like some and maybe even create more. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Create more of that vignette effect by putting some some more texture down using the sponge. <laughs> <It'd be. laughs> so since I want to do vignette, that means I want to do darker. So add some brown, but also to mix it up a little bit, I'm going to add some blue to be an opposite to how warm everything is. Let's cool it down with some blue on these corners. I'm going to take multiple blues. Ooh, yes. It's like a purpley brown now. Maybe even add a little bit. I like this one, this one. This blue. I've got super dark blue, dark blue, blue, and light blue. <laughs> My basic, basic color names. Ooh, yeah. Added the blue blue to it. Okay. See what we can do. Ooh, sorry about that squeakiness. Almost out of the color. Ah! Well, that'll have to do. Ooh. I didn't realize, but that was great for making it feel like we're more inside the tree by adding that. Maybe I'll do a little bit. Oh, let's let's look. And take a moment and look at the overall effect. Yeah, maybe a little bit more at the top and bottom. Okay, let's mix some more. It doesn't even have to be the same color. Ooh, that was a lot of blue. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that much. That looks really nice though when I'm seeing it. Oh, you can't see it, dang it. I'm seeing it on the palette compared to how warm everything is down here. I actually quite like that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be bold and use that. And not tame it with extra red or brown. Just whatever's on there. And let's just see what that looks like. I like to try to turn the sponge this way and that when I use it so that unless I really want it to look like the same imprint every time if you turn it and like press it on its side or something like that then it'll look a little bit more organic with the shapes that it makes. Ooh. 
Yes, I like that very much. It makes it much more rich. It was looking a little flat. So much of the same color family taking up all the space. Mm, nice. Okay. I guess I'll show you a little up more up close because it doesn't really capture the. So when you say it up close, it looks just like a totally different color just sprayed on. But then when it's farther away, it just makes the overall color scheme a little more interesting, I think. And I got a little texture in here in this area. I didn't want to add too much in there, but I don't want it to be too boring either. Yay! I think I've done working on the background for now. Probably I will add more especially maybe little details to these leaves that were individually drawn. But for now, I feel happy about the level of work it's gotten, and I want to work on the griffins some more. How are we on time? We've got 12 minutes until break time. Just wanted to make sure that brush is as rinsed out as possible. I'm going to go back to this larger brush that I was using for the leaves just to mix a color. I'm deciding what I want to color next though. I think adding more shadow to the white parts of the griffins would be a nice next step. Which is great because we already have, although I was using this, so maybe I'll just keep using this one. I was going to say I could use this color. I mean, I guess I could. Nothing's stopping me. <laughs> but I have been using this, so I'll mix something up with this. So that it's got the same sort of base. And we're just building on that base. Okay, I woke up all this color. And it's got a lot of white in it, so it's actually very gray. I'm actually going to take a little bit of that away because I don't like using white too much in watercolor because it never, of course, looks the same as the paper. It almost looks like a band-aid or <laughs> something. It, it doesn't feel quite right, so I'm going to take a little of this away. I mean, the white is good if you want to make a pastel, like a pastel tint of a color. Definitely adding white will do that. Okay. Let's see how this works. I'll just work my way from this side to this side, deepening the shadows, especially, I realize, under this wing, it would definitely be more shaded, and probably this whole area, just because of the griffin's own wing casting a shadow. If the light is coming from outside, I think almost all of this. So in other words, in front of this character is where the light's coming from. So actually most of this I think would be would be uh, in shadow. So the first thing I'm going to do, because of this is such a big area, I'm just going to wet the paper so that I can get a smooth application of the shadow color. I want to, at the same time, avoid as much as possible the feathers because the feathers are actually rather translucent. So the light would be shining through them. Ah, little hair. No, no little hair. Okay, got the little hair off. There, the front of the legs would be catching some light, so leave that. So I guess at this point, the idea is that a lot of the light is coming from this hole in the canopy. 
so I shall do my best to shade with that in mind. Okay, I think that's wet enough. Let's apply this gray color. And try to get it evenly on there before it dries too quickly. And around the feathers, the wing feathers, I mean. Yeah, these, these two. Yep. That's exactly why I started. I think I learned it in one of my illustration classes, actually. But I started working on paper bigger. One of the many reasons. I think the illustration class, so I don't think I learned it there. I had done it before, but that's what really cemented it. Because my professor was like, yeah, you can put notes in there or do little test swatches and all this stuff that you could do. So there's some other reasons why too, like when you're, if you work to the edge, then you can, your pen or your brush can slip off and the line just doesn't look the same as the rest of the lines. And then you've got this whole, the whole outside is just doesn't look the same as the rest. And to me, that just is, it's not the look I'm going for. So that's a, the first reason why I started working smaller than the overall size, but then yeah. You could do all kinds of stuff in here. You can make notes about what you want to do next. Like, don't forget to blah, blah, blah. I've done that before. <laughs> okay, that's nice. I'll let that dry. And then let's apply this gray to these little fellows, especially considering we now really have with the background great hints as to how the shading should be applied to them. So the their fronts of them should actually be pretty pretty shadowy. So I'm just going to... And, and they're pretty round, so it's really easy, relatively, to apply the shadow. Just from imagination, because they're almost circular, <laughs> these, these griffins. Watercolor is a lot like markers, or my experience is very similar because you got to work kind of fast to get it down before it dries. Before it dries too much and you get like this line where the dry stuff meets the new wet stuff. And sometimes you want that and so you let it dry on purpose. put the color down and then I take a little water so that I can just soften the edge, feather the edge as it's moving into lighter areas. Oh, the sorry is so much better because they're not looking so flat. This one. It's kind of hard with a light gray like this. Sometimes though just the way the water makes the paper gray, just as that natural effect of wet paper looks gray. And then it dries and it's like, oh I didn't really put that much down, and you have to do it again. Because <laughs> it's hard to tell what what is gray because the paper is wet, and what is gray because pigment went on the paper? Add a little bit more around this one's eyes. So even though they are so round, they do have a tiny bit of like a, like a forehead or how you would explain that, I don't know, but 
Their heads aren't actually perfectly round. Oh, Sarah, hello! Surprised to see you. Are you still feeling unwell? Well, if you are, I hope that you're feeling a little better at least from yesterday. Thank you for joining me. How are you? That's so nice to have so many people in the chat with me. It's been a nice, busy, nice, busy year so far. Well, these wings, wing feathers here I protected because they're supposed to be white, but since they're on this side, I think they'd be gray actually from just from the shadow. Oh yeah. Well, that's good though, because I've found that even if I'm feeling better in general from having a cold or whatever, if I actually get go to work, then it's a different story. And then I'm like, oh, I wasn't as better as I thought. And since you have such a physical job, I think that it might be even more likely to happen. Of course, I don't know might be different for you but that's my experience it's good to wait until feeling basically a hundred percent better for doing anything intense okay these little claws here I was saving because they should be white or you know as white as claws get but since they're in shadow I'm actually gonna add a little bit of the shadow color to them Two minutes till my break time and I'm looking forward to it because I don't have my snack yet so I'm a hungry hungry girl. I'm hungry I want to eat my little mini bell peppers and my little cucumber. And then we're having Thai curry. Thai red curry. I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite things. Thai red curry for dinner. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> Ah, this is so nice. So I'm gonna see actually if I can soften this up a little bit. It dried a bit more hard edged than I wanted and happily it is working. So I'm just gonna work this area a little bit. So the watercolor is relatively fresh so it's you can still work it. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and dab. And it won't be 100% even, but it'll at least not have that super... I don't know if you could even tell from this far away, but it had a rather strong line. So I got rid of that. And this is a more gradual transition to the lighter side. Oh, I really like how these are looking. They have that lovely little edge. I love this. Let's see if it'll focus. I think it did. This little edge where the color can't exceed the water anymore and so it's just a little bit extra dries, a little bit more pigment along the edge where it dried. It's that little kind of thing that makes me love watercolor so much. It's so pretty. That organic, organic effect. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> I'm a different kind of Disney princess, but yeah, probably. <laughs> oh man, you should hear. In our house, we make songs up all the time. Well, especially we're singing about uh, the puppies and Kiki. And I sing about the pigeons too. And they're not very good songs, but we're always singing to everybody in the house. <laughs> It'll just be stuff like chappy, 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 hey little chappy, 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 chappy. <laughs> just be something like that. And I'll sing for like five minutes like that. And chappy is just there. And she's looking at me. And she's wagging her tail. It's like maybe doesn't quite understand what I'm doing, but she's she she feels the the mood. The mood comes through. The happy mood comes through. Okay. <laughs> 
let us do a little work on the dark parts of the griffins. I'm especially keen to add some dark lines here where, okay, so before I'll explain what I'm going to do. The feathers are kind of like the leaves where the light is coming through. They're translucent. So even though these feathers are black, with the light coming through, they're actually more gray. But where the feathers are overlapping, there's a dark line because it's blocking more light. So that's what I'm going to add. Aw, that's cute. So Misty gets a song too. Yay. My grandma would always say, stuff like oh this is a cat that likes to be sang to you have to sing to this cat and she'd sing to my cat when she was visiting <laughs> i think that maybe that's where i got it from she'd be like oh you need to she would tend to cats that in, in my mind i mean i never asked her about it because i was so little when she was doing this but um i think the last time she did it i was like eight or nine or something i can't remember but never inquired but in my mind it was like Cats that need to be sung to tended to be long-haired, fluffy cats. But I just sing to everybody. <laughs> I don't know where she got that. <laughs> this is a funny, that's a nice memory I have. This is a cat that you need to sing to. You can sing to all cats, I think. Okay. Here we go. And the same sort of thing is going to be happening, I think, here. These uh, feathers are overlapping, so there'll be a little bit of dark here, here, and here. But here, these, at least to the viewer, as the light is coming through like this, to the viewer's eye, this front part of the wing will be blocking the light from coming through here as well. So let's do it. Let's do it. So I basically have to imagine the shape of the feather, the undrawn shape that's on the other side of this one, and then paint to that. Ah, this is still a bit, this is still a bit damp, so I'm going to use my other hand to hold this hand up. And it's this little bit of detail that I don't necessarily remember on my own. No matter how many, I've drawn quite, I've drawn and painted quite a few griffins now. But I don't necessarily always remember that it works like this, that the light works like this on feathers. So that's one of the reasons why I always, always, always work from reference, if at all possible, for my main illustrations. Okay, we got the first overlaps done. Let's add where this part of the wing will be blocking light from coming through to the back part of the wing. I'm going to leave a little bit of edge, just a tiny bit, maybe not even 100%, just a little bit like it's catching some light, some reflected light from somewhere else in the tree. And then these feathers should also have some little overlap, but I think it won't be as dark because as we can see with this little fellow, the, the uh, feathers get lighter as it gets closer to the back. So I'm gonna make this very watered down so that it's not too dark for the color 
of the feather. I forgot about my break time. <laughs> well, I'll just finish these few feathers and then it'll be break time. Time to have my delicious cucumbers and things. They're waiting for me. Little snack sized cucumbers. They're very cute. Okay. Yay! That's good enough to go on break. I guess I'll show you how it how it's looking. So this ah, and it, as it dries, I feel like the effect is even more visible, making these feathers look like they're translucent. <laughs> I love looking at all these, <laughs> all these different <laughs> little emoji things. Okay, okay, break time! I'm gonna put my little BRB sign right here. So if anybody comes in, they're like, what's going on? I'm gonna mute my mic and be back in five minutes.
I'm back. Aoife's back. She and Chappy got some uh, tasty cucumber slices. Good girl. Go lay down. Okay. Where were we? It's so nice. This is just coming along with no no issues. Just working on it a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay, let's work on this other wing. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the welcome back. Actually going to pull a little of this paint up. I'm looking at it. It's a little short of the end of this level of feathers. There, and I'll just smooth that out. Okay. That's a little better. Okay, other wing. On this one, I'm looking at the reference image. There's actually not too much overlap it's a, on this, this little area. Over here, they're not overlapping all that much. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's a kitty on a kitty. So I'm going to bring this up and then, okay, yep, yeah. and a little bit more. So come down, it gets thinner and thinner as the feathers get farther and farther apart from each other. This little line of overlap is thinner and thinner. Oh, it's still kind of damp there too. Hold my hand up with my other hand. Even though I'm pleased that this illustration is coming along very smoothly, we're also getting to the point where I'm starting to lose steam. <laughs> and I keep wanting to like take a break and not work on it anymore. But that's another nice thing about the live streaming. Just gotta have to work on it. Can't stop now. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and work a little bit on the branches. So they still need to be a lot darker than what they are. Ooh, I want a drink of water too. I keep putting this too low. There. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. See you when you get back. Okay. Let's mix a darker color for the branches. This time I'm going to use black. I think I'll add in some blue as well to really make it a shadow, shadow color. Okay, so I've got that nice, ooh, I love that. It's so rich and nice blue, black. And then let's add the brown. Opposite of blue is orange, so I might add some orange as well, but we'll see what this looks like. Because in theory, that's how it works. If you mix orange with blue, then you'll get black, but that's not really how it actually works. <laughs> All right, I like the color, but it's not dark enough, so let's add a little more black. 
Ooh, there we go. And a bit more blue. Let's do a slightly different blue. There. Okay. Now, where do I want to start? All the branches are quite dark, except for little areas where the light's just barely lighting them up along the edges. So I don't think it really matters where I start. I'm actually going to turn it this way. So this feels better to me somehow to work from this work down. And I'll start with this main branch that everybody's sitting on. need to keep my little brush in hand so that I can bring the paint up into these tiny areas between the toes. Use the big brush to put the main bulk of the paint down, but then use the little brush to bring it in between the toes. Because this, this big brush is definitely too big to get in, in these tiny spaces. Halfway down, halfway down the branch. And I'm trying to protect these little areas I already painted so that it's showing that little bit of highlight. I'll do my best to protect that and not paint over that. This, this space close to the tail. I need the small brush to bring the paint in to those small areas. Come back to this larger uh, offshoot, we'll call it, while the main branch is still relatively damp, so that it's a little bit more clean transition into this branch. Yeah, excellent. I really like how how dark this is. This might be as dark as I want to go, but we'll see. I'm always continually evaluating as stuff gets done. What is the overall effect? I 
So I'm definitely not trying to just copy the reference images I have, but I do want to make sure to have enough depth in my color so it doesn't look really flat. Sorry, this part is, I can't show it as well, because <laughs> working down like this is definitely feeling right to me, but it's hard to keep it on the screen when it's this, this direction. Oh, I think that's all right, though. Having this darker color is really nice, because these branches were looking translucent. I don't want the branches to look translucent. I want the leaves to look translucent. Very nice, very nice. I think I'll tackle this branch next, and then this one. So I'll go back to having it normal, normal orientation. I might need to mix some more color. Something that is nice at this point, though, is I think I don't need to make every single branch the same dark color. Like right here, having this one remain lighter than this one just helps show that this is a different branch than this one, since they're overlapping. No, pet hair. I got it. Got it off. Got pet hair off. Something else that leaving some of the branches a lighter brown does is help them look like they're farther in the background. Of course, at this small scale, you wouldn't actually have atmospheric perspective happening, but since it's an illustration, you can still take advantage of that sort of visual language. It doesn't have to be completely naturalistic in that respect. Oh, thank you! Yay! I'm glad you think so! Every time I look over at the monitor over there, I'm like, wow! It's a completely different experience from looking at it yesterday. I'm really hoping that <clears throat> with this new live streaming schedule this year, I'll be able to, even if I can't get an illustration a month done, which was my goal forever, but I, I've kind of come to accept that this is not going to happen with all the other things I want to do with my life, but if I could get one done every two months, that would still be awesome. That'd still be three times as many as I got done last year, so... That's good enough. It's just this little, not little, it's one of the bigger branches, but it's just in the corner here. Yes, this is very nice with the much darker brown. It really helps. And then some areas, so let me see if I can show you. I love how this, so here, I've added that really dark brown, but then I let it fade and didn't even add any here. And so this makes it feel like it's going off into the background. I love doing that kind of stuff. It's so fun, makes watercolor paint so fun. Okay, I want to work. I want to work from this way, this way, but this is wet. 
Okay, I think I can do it like... Oh, if I do it like this. <laughs> These branches that are growing into sort of the griffin here. I don't want them to end bluntly sticking into the griffin, so I'm making it a bit more of a gradient effect as it comes closer. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make, but for some reason that feels better to me than just painting the really dark black-brown straight up to the griffin. I like that better. Like that better. Oh, you're welcome. Have a great walk. I hope it's really nice weather for you over there. Bye. And a drink of my water. That's weird. My stream looks blurry on. Oh, there it goes. The stream looked blurry on to it, so I have both Twitch window open and my OBS window open. OBS was looking fine, but Twitch was looking blurry for a second, so I don't know what was up with that. It was just how it was coming into me, and not that the video itself was was blurry. Okay, with these, I'm thinking here. I've got a lot of little twigs, and I think I'm going to just try only adding this extra dark brown on top of this one that's coming across and sort of pointing, also pointing at our main character, and then see what the overall effect looks like, and if I feel like I want to add more dark brown to the other little twigs in this area, or just leave it. Okay, I think what I'll do is I do like having some of these twigs a slightly different shade. I'll put dark up at the top and then fade it, fade it out. Kind of like how I did over here. Now we'll just take damp brush to pull the color down and fade it into the existing color. I think we'll put, there's this little tiny twig right here, we'll put a little bit, a little bit of dark on there. There, that's nice. <laughs> Feeling thirsty again already. Ah. Wow, we're getting so close to done, actually. I'm very, very pleased. Maybe the next thing to work on, I only have two colors for the brown on the griffins. So let's add 
yet another layer of shadow onto the that that brown for the tails the brown spots on their wings and their back feet and I was using I believe this I'll call it my middle brown <laughs> in between that really yellow brown and that really dark brown oh yeah this actually seems great just adding a little of this to the color I already had on here especially with this blue here just mix it all up add a little bit more water okay and I definitely want to use a small brush for this as well I actually think right here we have this patch of brown but it's right at the edge where the light would be coming would be curving around the edge of the griffin so I'm actually just gonna leave that how it is and then let's work on the tail let's use the still damp it feels pretty dry okay good so adding more shadow and keeping in mind where the lights coming into this little haven from around this area oh thank you <laughs> thank you thank you so adding this next layer of shadow with the idea that it's being lit from there Maybe right here it would be, there'd be the body casting perhaps a little more shadow. So I'm going to add more shadow color here. But as the tail comes down, it's more freely being lit. So less shadow as it comes down. But maybe here, this branch, on the other hand, casting more shadow perhaps. It's all from imagination. So just doing what feels right. Yeah, I think that's good. Yep, yep, yep. Let's keep going. This is still that part where I'm like, uh, I want to take a break. I want to stop. For some reason, it feels like more, it feels like it's taking longer, even though I'm working on it the same amount of time as, as ever. But this always happens. This, this part, it's the same. I'm no longer in that stage that I was saying the last couple times where I feel like, oh man, am I actually going to be make, able to make something I'm satisfied with based on how it's looking now. I'm not in that, that doubtful part of the process, but now I'm in that. My mind is does not want to focus part. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> I don't know why this is the stages, but it is. These are the stages that I go through. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I know I've said it multiple times, but it really, really does help doing this on the live stream. It's still... It's still surprising how much it helps. yesterday um it was nice raiding um david peterson's channel that i've been following forever and never actually got to watch and was super happy about that but then he also was talking about there's certain things that he just he can't stream because he he can't concentrate or he doesn't want people to see that or whatever see that part of the process and i was like oh i'm so happy i'm not alone <laughs> The same thing happens to me. There's certain things that just I just need to be able to concentrate. It's also not that interesting, so I don't feel like I want to put it on live stream. <laughs> yeah, body doubling effect. That is the that's the theme for 2024. Body doubling effect, because <laughs> it totally works. 
It's totally working. All right, these little guys' tails are so small. I'm just putting a little line of... Here I put more, like, hatching almost. But here, they, they're too thin. Too thin of tails to achieve that. Just a single line of the second shadow color. I'm not sure who I want to raid today. What my so it was amazing luck yesterday that one of the like three streamers that I most interested in of people I follow happened to be streaming and it I was looking at the other couple which are game streamers they're actually localizers game localizers and one of them actually will I think should be streaming when we're done but they've been streaming from a game I haven't played yet this is what I was concerned about <laughs> no spoilers so we'll see I might just find a random art streamer and see what it, they're up to. I mean, it makes sense that a localizer would want to stream their most recent project instead of a game that's a couple years old because it takes me forever to finish the games, the Otome games. Oh! Are they art streamers? If they'll be streaming, then I wouldn't mind checking them out. So it might be easier <laughs> just to go with your recommendations and spend a bunch of time looking. But I guess first I'll check and see what, so it's, uh, I'm pretty sure one of them is Idea Factory International. The other one is Axis Games. And I'm pretty sure Axis Games was the one that was going to be streaming today when I'm done. So I'll check and see what they're doing. If they're either doing a game that I'm not that invested in or they're doing a game that I have already played, then I'd like to go over there. But they were streaming last week, Sympathy Kiss, and I'm like, no, no spoilers. <laughs> oh, nice art. Yay. Yeah. In that case, that's the plan. We'll check out what Axis is streaming. If that's a no-go, then uh, we'll do your recommendation. Okay, let's see. Oh, they're little feathers on their wings. That's where we have more brown. More darker brown. Boop, 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 boop. I'm trying to get a fluffy effect here. These the birds that I'm basing these griffins on are so small that many of their feathers are just those little teeny tiny wispy like I don't know how to explain them but they're very soft and and fluffy so trying to get that effect with watercolor with such a tiny drawing in the first place hey Exy, do the people that you're uh, gonna recommend I mean if even if we don't go over there today, I would still love to have your recommendations because, like, why not? I There's so many people to choose from. It just makes it easier to just go with your re recommendations. Do they stream regularly at this time so that I could be like, oh, we're going we're gonna to do this person every time? Because I really like consistency. It just helps me. <laughs> so, um, it's I mean, it's not a problem if they don't. But I'm just wondering. Okay, so I'm taking the same color and just layering it, and it'll 
Even though it's the same color I already used over here, it'll still make it even darker just by layering. But I'm feathering it out. These are so small. I don't think there would actually be too sharp of shadows because they're mostly in 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 shadow. They're just in a big shadow being inside of the canopy of leaves. Okay, let me look at this from I was going to say from far away, but it's I'm looking at my monitor, so it makes it like this big. I think that I'm actually ready to go really, really dark for the black feathers because the overall variety, we've got some really light, light, light colors. And then we've got this really nice dark branches. How much time do we have? We have 15 minutes. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, I love being able to, so I was thinking yesterday, I'm pretty sure I've already said it, but I love this idea you gave me. You guys have been giving me great ideas. This is great. Um, anyway, I was like, oh, he, David Peterson always streams on Wednesday. He streamed on another day, but Wednesday was perfect for me because I stream on Wednesday. So if I can find like three people and just be like, I raid them. It's time for us to go to David Peterson. It's time for us to go to so and so. I love that. It's easy for me to remember. It's easy for me to re remember. So I actually forget. There's so much going on in my brain all the time. It's actually really hard to remember stuff on my own. Okay. Taking black and mixing it into the gray that we already had. And I have been mixing brown in, but I think this is going to be my deepest black. I feel ready to go to the final black, at least until we add ink on top. And let me see if anywhere is still damp. It feels all dry. So I shall just work from this way to this way, doing the black feathers on the griffins. Hopefully this is enough color. It's a pretty big splotch of color here. So I'm, I'm hoping, it, I think it'll be, I think it'll be enough. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because my stream is so late for you. I think my stream is really early for people in my country. When I first started streaming, everyone was like, well, make sure you stream at a meal time or whatever. And I was like, well, depending on where you are, it's not a meal time for certain people. And for other people, it's sleep time. So I was like, I'm, I'm not going to use that advice. I'm just going to stream when it works for me. Because if I can't stream regularly, there's... It's really not going to work. I do appreciate that you stay up late with me for my streams. It's so nice. I really do appreciate it. giving these griffins this black stripe that goes all the way down. On the birds, they have a long black tail. But of course we don't have a bird tail on here because it's a griffin. So I figure I'll sort of represent that long black tail with a long black stripe. <laughs> oh, what is this cute froggy? That's adorable. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, Sarah's back. Hello. 
I love seeing that little ranger sliding in. I don't know if I'll ever get bored of it. Oh, that was another thing that was so fun yesterday about raiding. I got to use my own emoji things, my own emotes. I didn't think about that until I was actually in the chat and I was like, oh, oh, look at these. I can use them myself. I never imagined that that would be a thing that I would be doing, using my own, my own emotes. Even though, why not? Why not use them? It just didn't cross my mind. I think these feathers would be relatively dark because they're not only black feathers in the first place, they're being shaded by these other feathers. Well, this one's got a bit too dark, so I'm just gonna suck up some paint with my towel. Even it out. There, nice. Suck up the paint, suck up the paint. Let's make it lighter. Yay. Trying to work evenly here so that the feathers don't get any extra lines on them that I don't want from the paint drying. <laughs> Sound effect. <laughs> I always have a paper towel when I'm watercoloring. They're so useful, not just for wiping your brushes on, but for being a tool in and of themselves. Now I'm just blending the paint where it seems good to me. Smoothing some edges. Wow, it really looks so translucent doing it this way. I think I actually want to darken these feathers a little bit, so what I'm going to do is put some black paint at the top and then use a bunch of water to spread that out. And then... Paper towel! Spread it out some more. Paper towel. Here I realize this will probably be shaded a little bit because of the body. Well, these feathers are meant to be almost white anyway. There. I do need to add some shading to this part. So I'm actually going to do that while I'm at it. Just take. I'll do the same kind of thing. Take a little black and then take a lot of water to thin it out and then use my favorite paper towel to lighten it up even further. Get up there, sponge. A little spongy. So this part is supposed to be white feathers, but it's in shadow, so it should be darker from a light logic perspective.
Okay, stop messing with this wing. I didn't do this wing yet, but since this is wet now, if I work on this wing, I'll get my hand right on there, so. Oh, we only have six minutes. So I maybe won't even be able to finish this wing, because there's all these little guys. Oh. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Well, I guess we'll find out. I'm a way too small to get 40 viewers. <laughs> I am a micro streamer. That's what I call myself, micro streamer. Well, yeah, I guess we'll find out, and then that'll be good to know so that for the future, so we could like test it once, see how it works, and then if the raid doesn't work that time, then we could save that streamer for another time when we've grown a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, good point. I didn't know what would happen. I had seen that because I looked at Twitch's little page about raids and I read all of their little tips and stuff and I saw that you could change that step, but I didn't think about, well, what happens? What happens when you do that? Okay. Um, so I think I'll just start with these wing feathers. Let's see how much time we have. And then let's see on the sides of them. This one is actually pretty dark already on this side. I'll put a little bit. And this one. Doing little patting my brush on the page to get a little feathery texture, hopefully. That's the idea. And my paper towel on the edges here where the light would be hitting and therefore it would be a little bit brighter. person is the most wingy of the branch group. Fluffy here. I'm gonna do little some little fluffy lines. Cause these birds that the griffins are based on, supposedly that the human people who research them think that they bundle up like this in the autumn and wit winter for for warmth. So that would make sense why this one looks so fluffy on the back. Okay. We only have two minutes, so let's call this good, take a close look, and then let's see who we're going to raid today. This is a fun new thing, <laughs> fun new thing to raid at the end of the stream. And man, now that I am looking at it now, <laughs> again, on my screen over here, it looks totally different from looking at it in with my naked eye directly. I'm so happy this is almost done. The watercolor is nearly done. So here's a nice really close up. Ah, thank you camera. So here's how it's coming along. We've added so much watercolor, leaves in the background, texture, darker shading on almost everything. Really happy with how this little fellow is coming along. Looks really, really good, I think. 
And the little pew, little tail here. Oh, I just realized I want to bring this down to make that stripe that I put here. So that's good that I... That's the only one where you'd see that on the branch. So. Yay! We're making amazing progress! I am so happy! Oh, thank you, thank you! Thank you! Okay. Less than a minute left. Let me see. What is Axis up to? Let's see, do I have a thing about it? No, just manage your dashboard. Is Axis streaming? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one is streaming Suikoden right now. These are my only followed categories. Suikoden. <laughs> Suikoden 1 is my favorite game ever, of all time, ever. And I love these ones too. Nobody's streaming Suikoden. Okay, anyway. <laughs> It looks like nobody I'm following is streaming, even though... Oh, maybe that was 4 Pacific time? Which I think is 5 my time. So maybe they haven't started yet. Okay. Bubbly Fay. Okay, Sarah, you have to message me that one. Because XE already claimed first dibs. <laughs> on the recommended stream but if you message me that one then it can, uh that streamer can be a an option okay let me see I'm using my app margo margo's emo Mone. simone simon simon margo simon simon are right, okay <laughs> let me see how I know there's a way to do it in the app. I did it. Or I didn't do it, but I read about it. Oh, cute. Okay. Okay, just a minute. Hold on. Doyate. Okay. I gotta go to my own. Got it. Okay, go to my own. I'm still learning. Bear with me here. I'm still learning. Okay, go to my own chat. <laughs> okay. Oh, don't show me this. Okay, hold on. Twitch was asking me, do you love the app? And it was blocking the chat thingy. I would have to accept my own chat rules. Yes, of course. I shall be nice. Okay, so it's like forward slash raid, right? Or is it raid forward slash? <gasps> oh, I don't remember. Is it raid forward slash? Oh, no. Raid. Wait, wait, wait. I think it was doing something. Slash first. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, here we go. And then raid, right? You put raid. And then... Let me look at that again. Margo Simone Art. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right at all, but... It helps me spell it, so... Okay, here we go. Let's try it. The raid has been created. Oh, so fun! Okay. And now I know to look at the top. I didn't know to look at the top, and then there's a little thing that I can click once it's ready. Okay, four viewers ready. Okay, okay. Here we go! Already ready. Ten seconds. Woohoo! Yay, we did it! All right. Anybody still watching my stream or watching the recording? I'm about to close off because we successfully raided. Super exciting. My second raid ever. So I'm going to end my stream. Thank you for watching.